And now for part two of my interview with fertility specialist, Dr. Sammy David. What about stress? Because there are countless stories, now, albeit <laughs> anecdotal, of couples who for years have tried to get pregnant. And then once they stop trying, lo and behold, they have a successful pregnancy. That's a very good point. Stress usually manifests itself as low progesterone or inability to conceive or conceiving and not being able to hold it. Stress is a major issue. So things like acupuncture could help, mind-body techniques can help, yoga can help. You cannot, as a, as a doctor, it's, it's silly, it's wrong to tell a person you're under stress, go see a psychiatrist. They're under stress for a reason, right? You cannot simply tell them you're under stress and that's why you're not getting pregnant. Look further. If it is stress, then it's manifest as usually low progesterone or hormones like prolactin that may be elevated as well. And what about the role of diet and exercise? Well, uh, people who are underweight and people who are overweight have a diminished uh, chance of becoming pregnant. Also, there is some concerns about the, the baby, its nutrition and so on. So you want to try to be as close to your ideal weight as possible. Exercise is good for you, good for the mind, but not in excess. There were some articles many years ago that dealt with too much exercise, endorphins, and too much aerobics can actually lower your progesterone levels, make it harder to get pregnant mm -hmm. than when getting pregnant, higher chance of a miscarriage. So you have to tone it down. Even something as good as exercise for your life and for your health, if it's too much, it's not good for your reproductive life. And what about age, both maternal and paternal age? Age should be a diagnosis. If, if the person's coming in at age 42, 43 years old, trying to get pregnant, the age should be a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning the same things that cause infertility in a 25-year-old also causes it in a 43-year-old. So you are incumbent. Doctors should be aware that everything should be checked out. Bacteria, cervical mucus, sperm quality, bacteria in the man, lifestyle changes. Then, if everything is normal, you could say, yes, madam, I believe it is an age issue. One of the things that worry me most about the technique uh, or what's going on with the field of infertility, doctors are too, quickly, too quick to say, it's your age, that's why you're not getting pregnant. I've had many women in their over 41, 42, 43, becoming pregnant with simple techniques. And these doctors, a lot of the doctors doing in vitro, will think that that's the primary reason for their infertility, and it should not be, it should not be considered that. But what about the counter-argument? If you have a patient, a woman who's 42, 43 years old, and she decides not to right away go to IVF, and she spends a year with alternative treatments, hasn't she lost a valuable year at trying to get pregnant? If you're saying uh, spending an entire year, the answer is yes. I don't keep my patients that long. If I feel there's some urgency, 39, 30, 40, 41, when they have a fairly good chance of getting pregnant with in vitro, at least spend time, and this is what the book is all about, three months of evaluation mm -hmm. and testing, making sure their health is good, having them go through acupuncture, herbal therapy, and then if you say, listen, it's, you're 39 years old, you've been with me for three months, four months, five months, it's time to move on, I do give them the advice to go on to IVF. I'm not against in vitro by any means, How, and I'm glad it's there. However, the use of in vitro as the first line of treatment for infertility should not be the rule of thumb, which it is right now in the U.S., and in England for that matter. Now, in explaining the philosophy of your work, you state, and I quote, my approach to infertility has proven that a mere test of FSH, which is obviously a hormone, as a measure of a woman's potential fertility is an injustice to thousands of women. Now, injustice is a strong word. What, what do you mean by that? And I think it should be a strong word. You can, the IVF doctors tend to cherry pick the patients, all right? And when they have a woman 40 years old, FSH of 10, They'll say, you're a good candidate for in vitro. 40-year-old woman, FSH of 14 or 15, you're not a good candidate for in vitro. They're making a decision based on a single hormone test and whether you are or you're not eligible to do in vitro. But it's in, tacit in that comment is, oh, well, you will only get pregnant with IVF. They're not even giving the patient with a high FSH the chance to become pregnant on her own or simple methods. 
example was one patient, I, I think, I tell patients this is an interesting story, where a woman went to one IVF doctor and they said, you're 41 years old, your FSH is 18, all your eggs are bad, you'll never get pregnant. So they're, they're destroying her, cutting her at the knees. Goes to another IVF doctor, this one in New Jersey, says, same thing, you're 41 years old, your FSH is high, you'll never get pregnant, all your eggs are bad. She asks the doctor, well, will anyone tell me I'm not too old? And the doctor says, yeah, Dr. David likes to see older women. So she sees me, and what happens? Her mucus is too thick. I give her the equivalent of Robitussin, and she's pregnant with twins in one month. Why are the doctors making the decision based on age and FSH that the woman cannot get pregnant? They didn't even give her a chance. Let's discuss the economics of IVF because right. oftentimes IVF is not a covered procedure by insurance carriers. So do you think there's an impetus for IVF doctors to be going right to IVF since it's a very costly procedure? And it's also lucrative to them, but I, I hope not. The answer is I hope not. I mean, I, I will trust my IVF colleagues to believe that they are making the decisions appropriately. However, when I review cases where they've failed in vitro one, two, three, ten times, there's always, or usually always, a reason why the patient has not gotten pregnant, was not uncovered on the initial visit. In, in, in everything you do, whether real estate or law or medicine, you're advised to do your due diligence. And what I'm seeing, unfortunately, in a number of cases, not every IVF doctor, mind you, but they're not doing the due diligence that they, they should be doing. And what, what really scares me most is when these patients will believe the doctor saying, all right, your FSH is high, you're 41, you'll never get pregnant. And then they're pushed right into donor egg in vitro, which now costs twenty to $25,000 every attempt. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking in this book and the people that will read the book, both Jill Blakeway, who's the uh, acupuncturist and myself, we've had too many patients who've been told they'd never get pregnant, who've gotten pregnant by easier methods. And is it driven by financial uh, concerns? Um, Again, I hope not. I, I have trust in these doctors. I hope it's not driven by financial reasons. And to some extent, do you feel that this is a vulnerable population? These are men and women who, in many cases, have spent years trying to get pregnant. It's obviously an emotional roller coaster. So they're looking for a quick panacea. Yeah, the answer is yes, they are vulnerable. And that's what worries me, too. When I see a patient, I don't ask them to believe everything I say. I try to educate them. I try to encourage them to learn more about their bodies. I want them to learn how to be able to get pregnant on their own and reverse their infertility issues.